Hi, my name is Adrian Good, and I'm a Livestock and Feed Extension Specialist with the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture in Moose Jaw. Today, we're going to talk about feed testing. There's a lot of variation in feeds year to year based on precipitation, weather, fertilizer, whatever happened, there's a lot of things that can affect your feed quality. So testing it every year will really help to make sure you're feeding what you think you're feeding. So you can save money by feed testing. Uh, one, if your feed is better than you're expecting, you can save it for those times when nutrients requirements are really high for your cattle. So like during late gestation or calving when they really need a lot of energy and protein to finish cooking those babies and produce some milk. If your feed is not as good as you think, then you can plan and supplement when you need to or save it for those times when needs aren't super high. So there's a lot of different ways to feed test depending on what feed you're testing. So today we're gonna to start with hay. So to test your hay, you're going to need a forage probe and you can borrow forage probes for free from any Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture office or some crop insurance offices. You'll also need a power drill. You can do it by hand, but it's incredibly difficult. So what you do is you take your probe, put it a round side of a round bale or the short, smaller square side of a square bale. You drill it in. Once you reach the end, pull it back out. And you should have a nice full tube of hay. So once you've done that, you can pull the pin out of the probe, slide it off. And most of them will come with a little rod that you can jam in get any of the hay out there. We like to dump it into a five gallon bucket to start with, because if you're sampling 20 bales, that's gonna get you quite a lot of hay. So if you put it in a bucket, you can kind of corral it easier. So once you've got all your bales sampled and you've got a bucket full of hay here, you're gonna wanna take a smaller sample to send into the lab. So we have a gallon size zip top bag. We want this about half full of feed. Uh, too full, the lab's not gonna use it all and they we're probably just gonna throw some out. So this is why we say mix it in a bucket first so we can get a good representative sample. On the bag, we're gonna want your name and the type of feed that you're sending. This is gonna help the lab make sure they're testing what we think they're testing. So once you have that all packaged up into the bag, you bring it into a Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture office and we can help you send it or you can send it to a lab of your choosing. So when it comes to sampling your silage, it's equally as important as sampling your hay and there's a few different ways you can sample your silage. So first of all, if it's a silage bale, you're gonna sample it exactly like you would a hay bale, just on that round edge through the side and sample about 10% of the bales. When it comes to silage pits, there's a few different options you have. One, you can sample your silage as you're chopping it as it comes off the field. Just grab a handful, every load, every couple loads, make sure you're getting a representative sample of the entire field and fill up your bag. Some of the regional offices within the Saskatchewan Ministry of Agriculture do have these extended probes that you can use to sample the top of the pit. Uh, just call ahead, make sure they have one. Your livestock and feed extension specialist can come help you sample your silage pit. So we're going to sample multiple places around the pit. Do a zigzag motion around the pit. Make sure you're getting all the way down, get a full complete sample to collect and send to the lab. So the third option for sampling silage is going to be taking samples direct from the face of the silage pit. Now this isn't gonna give you as representative of a sample if you're trying to get it for your whole year, but if you wanna stop in, you know, every few weeks, couple months and take a sample off the face, you can get an idea of what you're feeding and you can alter as you need to for, throughout the year. So when we have our open face, we're gonna take our samples in a W or in an M fashion. So we're gonna get all throughout the pit to get a kind of good idea of what's going on here. We're gonna start by just brushing off the dry stuff and take a sample of the wetter stuff underneath so we're not getting a falsely dry sample. Once you've finished sampling and if you've got all of your equipment put away, make sure with your silage samples to squeeze out all the air. Uh, you wanna make sure that we don't get any air contamination in our silage if it's all possible and store it in the freezer if you're not gonna get it off to the lab or bring it into the office right away. And if possible, it's always nice to ship it on ice as well. And then not only do we need to sample our hay and our silage, but sampling grains and pellets and screenings and anything else you're feeding is also really important as well. When it comes to these grains, pellets, screenings, sampling is a little easier. You'll just take a sample every so often from the load. If you're getting one load, take it from a few times. If you're getting more than one load, make sure you're getting samples from every load. Again, we're gonna fill the zip top bag about half full and take it into our regional office or send it directly to the lab. 
Regardless of what type of feed you're sampling, you can call on your local livestock and feed extension specialist for support. We can help you get the feed tested and we can help you select what type of feed test you're looking for. For more information on feed testing, contact the Agriculture Knowledge Center.